book of Daniel and Revelation. And so this week we read uh, part of chapter 4, and in it um, they were talking about the angels that were worshiping God. And I'm going to read from verse, um, the bottom verse 8 to uh, the end. And it said, And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And so that's kind of what I want us to worship like today. I want us to worship like the angels who never cease to praise Him. So if you please stand so we can worship God today.
Okay, we're kind of in a series uh, regarding trials that we're going through, which obviously we're still going through some, and maybe some more than others, but there's a lot going on in the world today, and a lot going on in our own country, and we need to know how do we cope with this. Uh, I heard first in a series, though, though I didn't break it up into a series at that time, was several weeks back. When we're going through trials, what do we need to do? Well, we need to make sure that we're more concerned about God's glory than we are our relief. So it's, it's not all about us. It's about the praise that we give to Him and how we glorify Him in spite of the situations that we go through. Last Sunday we talked about the fact that as we go through trials, we, we must pray. We must pray diligently. We must pray um, strategically. And times, and sometimes we must be ready to pray spontaneously to God. So let me come to another one. When going through trials, we need to stay calm. We need to stay confident. And we need to give God time to work. You kind of put all of that together. Now I know if you're looking at the screen behind me right now, you're seeing several verses. Well, we'll be hitting all those verses just a little bit today. I put them up there because last week I used probably that many verses. And I had several texts during the week saying I didn't get number three or I didn't get number four. So I'm giving you the opportunity to get them today. You go ahead and mark them in your Bible whether you turn there or not. Just, just mark it down that that's a verse you want to go back and look at later on. But let's be honest. We seldom meet problems coming to us in single file. I mean, that would be kind of nice if it happened that way. That you just have you just have a trial, you just have one. You just have one that would come in your direction. But the truth is they get up on us. It's not just one, it is it's more than one, and sometimes it's several at one time. And because they do, here's what happens to us. We fall into discouragement or anxiety about all these things that's coming up, all these things that we have to handle, all these things that are getting us down. And before long, we're swapped with that, and we're not honestly focusing on God anymore. Our focus has been taken away by the circumstances around us. There can be so much going on that we hardly hear the voice of God. Has that ever happened to you? So much going on, you don't hear the voice of God. Sometimes you don't even seem like that we care if we hear the voice of God because we're swapped in what's going on. C.S. Lewis made this comment. He says, God whispers to us in our pleasures. But God shouts to us in our pain. And he was saying it that way because God has to raise himself up in that inner voice sometimes when we're going through pain to really be able to minister to us and to get us to put our attention back on him. So it's very important. Lewis understood that. And that's why he wrote it that way. We start kind of back in the passage where we were last week as far as Exodus 14 is concerned. If you remember, and all of you know the story well, but I mean the people that the Israelites that run away and getting away, getting their freedom, they seem to be doing really well until they come to the Red Sea. And now here they are with the Red Sea on one side of them and the Egyptian army coming up from the other side. So they're really scared to death. They wondered did they do the right thing when they followed Moses? Should they really have left? At least they had their lives there. Now they either go, they feel like they're either going to die at the hands of the Egyptians or they're going to drown. So they don't see it, they're not seeing a way out. So in verses 13 and 14, you have the word Moses to the people. He says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he's going to accomplish for you this very day. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see them again no more forever. They're never going to bother you again. They're never going to make you work again. They're never going to mistreat you or your family again. 
You're never going to see them again forever. I'd like to be able to say that about COVID-19, right? Amen. That we would never see about it again forever. Never hear about it again forever. Well, that's not the case. Maybe we come that to that day. But he was promised him this, this group that has given you all the heartache and has caused you so much pain through the years. He said, after, after today, you're going to see them again. Never. Never. They'll be gone. Now you will never face a crisis or a problem in your life for which there's no verse of Scripture. Whatever you're going through, there's a passage of Scripture that will minister to you. It's amazing sometimes whenever we're going through something and we're getting to that point where we're full of anxiety, we're feeling oppressed, we're having, a, we're frustrated, we're maybe really down, and you may get up for your morning devotional time, and the Lord will speak to you from His Word that morning for exactly where you are. It'll minister to you from exactly how you're feeling. God's Spirit will speak to you. Well, that's what I'm telling you, that you will never face a crisis. You're never going to face a problem for which there's no verse of Scripture. God's Word speaks to us all the time. We draw strength from God's Word. Someone has said this, there's a word for every worry, and there's a chapter for every crisis. Says you just must be there with God in God's Word for that to happen. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 19, from the NIV, it says this Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. Okay, now in the context, it's talking about retribution. I understand that. But I want you to grab the phrase. Leave room for God. Leave room for God. And then consider, I mean, God, God takes care, you know, He can handle the wrath part, He can handle the revenge part for you. It's not something He wants you to do. He'll take care of that. He'll protect you. But consider His other attributes. Leave room for God's peace. Leave room for God's strength. Leave room for God's love. Leave room for God's power. God has so much that He wants to do in your life. And He wants to do through your life. And He has everything you need. Sometimes we're, we're making choices. We're trying to take care of everything ourselves. Or we're listening to other people to try to see if, if they'll take care of our needs. By something they say or something they do. And I'm just telling you, that's when you leave room for God's work. Sometimes that means you have to take a step back to literally leave room for God. So that's important that we do that. Give God time to work. What's wrong with us in our society sometimes when I say give time for God to work? We don't like giving time, do we? We want everything to happen real quickly. What we want today, we want today. What we want to happen in the morning, we want to happen in the morning. We don't want to give God time to work because we want to take care of it and get it done. And the truth is, you can't handle, I can't handle all of our issues or problems. God can. But God's going to handle those situations on His timetable. Not on ours. So I'm just saying as believers, we have to understand that we must give God time. Give Him time to work. Psalms 46 and verse 1 says, God is our refuge. He is our strength. He's a very present help in trouble. He knows exactly where we are, what we're going through, what's happening. He knows what kind of trouble we face. You know, the interesting thing is, you go back to the very, some of the very first things I said. Trouble doesn't happen. Problems don't happen, typically, one at a time. 
One may spring up. And it seems like you're trying to get a hold of it. And then boom, something else happens. And then occasionally, as you're kind of wrestling with those two things, boom, something else happens. And that's almost at the point where then you suddenly do reach up to God. Because now you're overwhelmed. Well, if it takes that many to get our attention back to God, you at least see why it's happening. Because our attention needs to be drawn back to Him. Here are some thoughts. One or more could hit you right between the eyes, or it could maybe just hit you right in your heart, which would be more important than the other. It says, when facing difficulty, we need to plow into the Word of God. When you start facing difficulty, get into the Word. Why? Because it's got an answer. It can give you what you need. If it's peace, it can give you peace. If it's comfort, it can give you comfort. If it's strength, it can give you strength. We just read, God is our refuge and our strength. If it's power, He can give you more power. He can give you the energy that you need to get through the day. Sometimes, you know, if you start your day and you think, I don't know how I'm going to get everything done today or how I'm going to even be able to motivate myself to go into the day. How have you handled some of the problems that we've gone through the last two months? Some of the issues, some of the having to stay in. Not being be around the people that you want to be around. Have you, everybody handles it differently, don't they? More than likely. Mine was, pretty, mine was a pretty simple solution. Eat more sweets. Amen. I was hoping there'd be at least one more that would agree with me. <laughs> but after my lab work, my doctor did not agree with me. So, you know, eat more sweets may give you comfort. Comfort food's wonderful, right? And, and I always have any kind of comfort food problem. I'm just really weak when it comes to... Let's just say this. I've never seen... A donut or a cake or a pie that I wouldn't eat. I'm not particular. I don't have to have a certain kind or flavor. I, I just go for anything. We kind of need that concept and thought about God. That I just need God. I just need to fly into His Word. I just need to see what He will say to me. A second thought on that is this. A Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Think about it. A Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. That Bible is falling apart because that person spent so much time in it, page after page, reading it time after time, Gaining his strength through the years from that Bible, that it's falling apart. But let's, he has taken so much of it in that he faces situations and problems differently than most of the other people do. Because God's word is ingrained in his life. He knows where he gets his strength. And he knows to, to depend upon God in all situations. A third one that I read that I thought was interesting. God's promises are like the stars in the sky. The darker the night, the brighter the light. He's the light of the world. He's there for you. It may look like a dark night, but he's not, you're not there by yourself. He's right there with you. He wants to give you the light that you really need. And the fourth one is this. God wants His children to keep their emotions under control. And that comes from you having the right attitude. Emotions come and go. Attitudes come and grow. Thank you, God. You've got to get hold of the attitude part. God wants you to keep that up. I'll have another verse later that we can talk more about that. Isaiah 26.3 says, You will keep him to perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed on you because he trusted you. It's about trusting in God. You will keep him in perfect peace. God will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. So that's what we have to keep our mind is on him. And there's so many distractions every day trying to distract us from God's word, from God's will, from God's way. We must keep our minds on him. Isaiah chapter 7. First part of verse 4. It says, Take heed and be quiet. Do not fear be faint hearted. For these two stubs are smoking ground fire grains. The message reads like this. Listen. Calm down. Don't be afraid. Don't panic out of things that are in our head. See, we get all excited sometimes when we panic, really over things that are already burned out as far as God is concerned. And we're still worried about it and concerned about it and God's already taken care of it. He said, don't fret. Don't panic. There's been a lot of panic. There's been a lot of problems recently. But don't. We're not to. We're either coming out of a crisis or in the middle of a crisis or about to go into a crisis. You understand that's how life is? Think about it. You look at your own lifetime. You're either coming, you're either in one, coming out of one, or going into one. They're all different. Some are bigger than others. Some affect you more than anyone else. Some affect people you love more than anyone else. So, you know, they're coming. It's just a matter of, are we going to be depending on God or are we going to depend on ourselves? And it says, don't panic. Ultimately, the victory is ours through Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, the victory is still going to be ours. God is aware of whatever it is, or whoever it may be that's coming against you. And He is with you. He's promised never to leave you, never to forsake you. He hasn't, and He will not give God time to work. Deuteronomy 20, verses 3 and 4. And he shall say to you, or say to them, excuse me, he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you're on the verge of battle with your enemies. But do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble. Don't be terrified because of who they are. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. He's there for us all the time. We must let him fight our battles for us. Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 7 and 8. I, I, those pages just keep turning, don't they? You don't have to keep turning if you don't. Just write them down. That's why there's so many up there this morning. So you write them down. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with you. For there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God. To help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. He said, look, it doesn't matter if we appear to be outnumbered. It doesn't matter if we, if we are surrounded seemingly by nothing but our enemies. Michael W. Smith put out a, a, a two sentence, basically a two sentence song here just this last year. And the people call it by two or three different names, but one of them is Fire Battles. 
And part of the fact is just, it says, okay, you're, we seem to be so surrounded by our enemies. But he who surrounds us, he will fight our battles. He will fight our battles. I thought it was the craziest song I heard the first time and it became my favorite or one of my favorites. So you never know what you can learn from two sentences. Right? John chapter 14. Familiar passage for you. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Talking specifically to the disciples at that time. Don't let your heart be troubled because he's fixed to die on the cross. He's fixed to go, go back to heaven. He's, he's fixed to give himself that we can have life everlasting. And when he told his disciples that they're fearful. Would you be fearful if people if he had told you that? Yeah, you would. We could get fearful now when people talk about death and dying. But we don't need to. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because in my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you will come. You'll be with me. I will come again and take you with me. That where I am there, you may be also. And you drop down to the 27th verse and it says, Peace, I leave with you. Right? Can you get the picture? It's just the disciples and him talking at that time. He's sharing his words specifically with them. And he's talking about leaving. He's talking about He's going to another place. He's going to prepare a place for them and for us. And then he says, okay, I'm going away. Well, what does he say he's leaving? Peace, I leave with you. I'm giving you my peace. I'm leaving that with you. My peace I give to you. It's not the peace like the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled. And neither, neither let it be afraid. My peace will be sufficient. Just accept what I'm leaving with you. Stay calm. Stay confident at all times is not easy. Nobody ever said it would be. It's not easy to stay calm in tough times. Some of us have even more anxiety than others do. In whichever the case, wherever you are with that, we have to learn how to handle it sooner or later. Or it just drives us crazy. All of the verses from Philippians chapter 4, 4 through 9 would apply to what I'm trying to tell you this morning. So if you have your Bible, you haven't been trying to follow and keep up, but you would like to read along with me now, go to Philippians chapter 4 and drop down to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let, not, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What's he trying to get us to do? Instead of thinking about and meditating on all that's going on in a negative way, in a harmful way, Think on all the good things from God. It can change how you're thinking. It can change how you act. It can, they have, it can change how you respond to the bad things that have been happening to you. So 
So it says you, you end with any of those things. Think on those things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do. And the God of peace will be with you. If you get your mind moved to the right things, you can get victory over it. But you've got to get your mind moved there. Okay. It's back to that attitude again, right? It's back to that attitude. Notice, please, all the verses I just read to you from Philippians 4, 4 through 9 would apply. But remember, you have to start with verse 4. And he said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. We must make up our mind about joy. In fact, we need to cultivate the attitude of joy. And please note, again, this joy is to be always. He didn't say just, okay, sometimes. Okay, when you feel like it. Well, at least once a week. He said, always. This attitude is so important to Paul that he repeated it. And again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice. Our joy comes because of our relationship with the Lord. In spite of the things that are going on in our lives. The joy is found in the Lord. No words. Not only when things are going good, but in all circumstances and in every crisis. Life changes. Circumstances change. Different crises will come and they will go. You may be fighting for two or three things today that none of the rest of us know anything about, but are actually crises in your life But there will come a day when those will be gone. And more than likely, something else will hit. They come and go. They change. Circumstances change. Life itself changes. My goodness, how we've learned that lately. Crosses will come and they will go, but the Lord remains the same. He never changes. He never leaves you. Your joy needs to become the same. Because your joy is in Him. It's not in the circumstances of life. It needs to be never changing. Remember the last words of our sermon title. Give God time to work. Are you kind of sick with some of the things we've been Living in the last two months. Come on, you check it in. It's okay. We're not being tight to send to Washington or anything, so you're, you're all right. <laughs> There's things that we don't talk about the last couple of months. A, a whole lot of them. Those things are going to be changing. One day we'll look back on all of this. You know, 30 years from now, you may have grandchildren or great grandchildren that. Or saying, hey, hey, Granny, I think this is the last package of toilet paper you got back in 2020. <laughs> you have to buy some new now. So those things are going to change. Give God time to work. He's, he's bringing His will to pass in all of this, even though we may not understand. His will is going to be done because He's ultimately the one in control. Not anyone else. It's him. And that means that we must learn to wait on the Lord. We must learn to wait on the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 7 and 8. The last passage I have for you today. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Don't, don't fret because of people like that. Cease from anger 
Forsake wrath. Do not be anxious. Do not fret or be anxious for anything. Because these things only cause harm. And he's really talking about harm to you. To you. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing in this week. After our president has been saying for the last couple of weeks, we need to reopen. We need to re we, we need to get people away from home. We need to reopen. And this past week, the heads of the CDC and all this other stuff are beginning to say, it's time to open. It's going to be doing more harm than good to keep people in. That's what this passage is talking about. There comes a point. You wait on the Lord and let him open up the door. Don't get caught up in negative attitudes toward just people and what they're doing or not doing. What they're gaining or not gaining. Just remember, he's, he's got you. He's got you. I, I, I'll tell you, I've told people before, people told me before, you know, at certain times, say, I got your back. You, you need to understand God's got your back, He's got your front, and He's got both sides. He's got what's under you, and He's got what He has what is above you. God's got you. God's got you. Just give Him time to work. Stay in tune with Him, and they will. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you again for the day and for your blessings. We thank you for your word and we've used a lot of your word today. And Father, every word we've said, every verse we've turned to is a verse that can enlighten us, can give us strength and encourage us to be all that you designed and planned for us to be. May we not miss your will during these days. May we not miss an opportunity to grow in the various areas of our life during these days. May we stay centered on you. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name.